production. He has a feature film. I'll get the name in a minute. I'll remember. I don't, 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 uh, 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 uh. Undercover Angel. Yes. And he will, he is in pre-production now, will be in production, I guess, within the next 30 days. Has a couple of names associated with it. This man has a one-hour special on the Bravo Network about his career. He has directed 100 projects. Uh, I'll think of her name in a minute. Linda Blair. This thing comes from not sleeping. Linda Blair on that special, and she's not the only one who says this. And she's not the only one who thinks this. She says, this is the next Steven Spielberg. This man did a film called The Random Factor with Dan Aykroyd. His co-star, uh, oh, his star, actually, in that film, one of his stars, is co-starring with Harrison Ford in Air Force One. Interesting how things happen. We like him particularly well because he has hired our actors, APS members, for five separate projects, including two starring roles in two separate feature films. And there's no doubt in my mind that he's not doing that he will not have act a APS people in this one as well. I, I hope that's the case. I, I assume it is. Uh, this man has worked with some of the best people. I got a copy of that, that show that's on uh, Showtime. He's worked with Dick Clark and Steve Lawrence and, and, and Don Rickles and Gosh, Dan Aykroyd and Harry, Howie Mandel and Linda Blair and George Carlin and Rock Hudson and Jerry Lewis and Drew Barrymore and Rich Little and all sorts of other people. He's just an extraordinary individual. He gave me a copy of one of his films and he just told me a few minutes ago, he says, I have, I want, I want to get to you a copy of, of uh, The Random Factor, the film with Dan Aykroyd. He says, I haven't given you one of those yet, have I? I said, no, you haven't. So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to send him a copy of the videotape of the seminar in exchange. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a deal maker. I mean, my goodness. Turn of the Blade starred one of our actresses, Julie Horvath. Eleven other APS members had screen credit. I'm so delighted to have him here. He doesn't have the time to be here, like some of the other people don't have the time to be here. But I called him and I said, I'm not sure some of our speakers are going to be here, and can you squeeze it in? He says, I won't know until the last minute. I'll make every effort. And he's here, and he is an extraordinary person to know. Would you please help me to welcome him, Mr. Brian Michael Stoller. Actors, not me. So I'm always terrified when I come when I'm public <laughs> speaking. So bear with me. And uh, Rock has actually bailed me out quite a few times when I needed actors at the last minute. So I figured the least I could do as a favor to him was to come out and speak. Uh, and also, I know the Holiday Inn's air conditioning is pretty good. So <laughs> that's another reason I'm here. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Where, where can we start here? Um, also, too, actually, uh, what I wanted to mention, um, Rock just mentioned about researching. How many people here are, are on the internet or have access to the internet? Nowadays, as you know, that is like the easiest way to get information on people. So if you've got a meeting with a uh, casting director or there's a company you know nothing about, check them on the internet because if, if they're legit, if it, especially if it's a big company, there will be something about them. Uh, if there's casting directors, there's usually articles, etc. So. Anybody who's on the internet, definitely take advantage of that, okay? So, all right, let's see where we'll start here. I, again, because I'm working on my film, Undercover, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, I am doing another feature film. This is, uh, this is actually gonna be my fifth uh, independent feature film. Um, I've done stuff for the studios, I've done a lot of television, uh, but I really like doing independent films because I don't have to report to executives at a studio. There's a lot more control. And I'm fortunate that, I, that I'm able to do that now. Uh, I've been in the business actually almost 26 years, so it's, it's not something that, that happened overnight. Um, okay, let's see. You don't look more than 26 years. Oh, I'm, I'm actually 37, 37 years old. I, um, I'm originally from Canada. I had a, a TV series um, as an on-camera host, not as an actor, when I was 10. And I did my first network TV commercial that I produced, directed, and wrote when I was 13. So I've been around for a while, and uh, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff is from you know learning trial and error. And uh, 
I guess my approach is a little bit different. I um, I mainly speak uh, to actors and speak to um, you know the seminar environment. Usually, just you know when I'm asked to come in, I don't usually do this uh, like I mentioned on a, on a regular basis. So I'm going to um, because I didn't have a lot of time to plan here because I am working on this new film. I'm going to jump back and forth, but I think I still would have or will have some valuable <coughs> information for you. Okay, um, <clears throat> what I always stress to people, to actors, is personality is the most important thing, um, bar none. And a lot of actors are very concerned with acting classes, and uh, I know a lot of actors that actually get very obsessed with acting classes. Um, now, I believe in acting classes, but I believe in uh, uh, not taking too many acting classes. In other words, I know people that take it two, three times a week. Um, and acting classes are not the only way to learn the business of acting. You learn just by watching movies, you learn by videotapes, um, reading about it, and just studying uh, everyday people. And uh, so I, I just tell people, develop your personality first. Uh, there's so many people that come in to read, and they haven't developed their personality. They're just too concerned on how well they read the copy when they come in. And it's not... Casting directors and producers and directors are looking for personality. They're not looking for how well you can enunciate or how well you can pronounce a certain word. And sometimes, actually a lot of times, actors come in and there's words that they can't read and they get real nervous about it. It's like, oh no, I can't read this word. That's okay. Probably the casting director the director may not even know this word. So don't worry about not pronouncing the words properly. That's not why you're there. Um, I know a lot of actors, too, don't like cold readings because they feel they don't have enough time to study. Again, you don't have to know it word for word. Um, and I'm talking about, I, I mean, I've worked with the studios and I've worked with, with the top professionals and I know how it works. So if somebody tells you that you've got to know it word for word and you've got to pronounce it exactly right for a cold reading, to me, that just isn't true. Okay, personality is the most important thing. Um, actors like Dustin Hoffman, Harrison Ford, Glenn Close, Meryl Streep, all these people are personalities first. We go to see their movies because we like their personalities. And Dustin Hoffman, for example, when he played Raymond uh, in Rain Man, it was still Dustin Hoffman, but it was Dustin Hoffman as an autistic person. Uh, you know, when Michelle Pfeiffer played the teacher in, um, what's it called? Dangerous Mind. Dangerous Mind. Yes, it was still her as a teacher. And we go to see these people for their personalities. I mean, I tell actors that you are the computer and the only thing that's going to change is the software, okay? I mean, you can study and study and it would just be like we're all born into our personalities. We're all, we, we, we could be in different professions. I mean, it's just, if, if you go to school and study to be an attorney and you got some intelligence, you'll become an attorney. If you go to school and study to be a trash collector, you'll be a trash collector. So it really, it's, it, it, again, as an actor, all you have to do is do research and understand. And I tell people also, don't rehearse the lines, rehearse the character. And that's very important. I mean, when you're driving in the car, for example, you don't have to have the script on your lap and read and get into an accident, but you can think about the character. And it's also important to think about the character's backstory. Now, does anybody here know what the backstory is? Okay, a few, a few do. Um, Backstory is something that is not in a screenplay, is not in the story, and sometimes the character will talk about it or it will be brought up and sometimes it won't. But the backstory is where your character was before the movie started. And a good director will sit down with his actors and tell them a little bit about their backstory. But then there's a lot of directors who don't. They don't feel it's necessary or if it's an action picture and it's not a real character picture, they won't get into it. So. You could ask the director when you're working on a project, what's this character's backstory? Now, if the director doesn't know or doesn't care, then it's up to you to come up with a backstory. You can make up anything you want. You can come up with what their childhood was like, um, what their parents were like, what their friends were like, what other jobs they had, what good things happened to them, what bad things. And even though that's never going to come out in the dialogue, it's going to be in your head and it's going to add another dimension to your character. So that is something backstory to you know, if, even if it's your little secret, it's going to make you a better actor. Okay, let's see what else I got for you guys. Um, I also have 
my own, I don't know if you want to say theory, um, I have two words. There's a subjective actor and an objective actor. An objective actor, to me, is an actor who is aware that they are performing and that there is an audience, okay, and they're very mechanical. A subjective actor is an actor who is more internal with their emotions, and all that exists is the other actor that they are communicating with in the scene. And if you turn on the TV, watch television, I think you'll be able to see, like, this actor is, you know, is, is a subjective actor, or this actor is an objective actor. When you go to a play, if it's out there, if it's a very broad play, that is what I would call objective acting. Now, if you go to a play that's very intense, maybe a murder mystery, and it's a smaller theater, and the actors aren't projecting as much, that might be more of subjective acting. Um, I also tell people, too, I, I do a study a lot. I either read movies or on cable. I will turn the sound off, and I will watch the movie without the sound. And it's a great study as a director. It's a great study as a writer, and it's a great study for actors because that is the difference, the big difference between television <coughs> and feature films. Television is talking heads. If you turn the sound off on a TV show, like 21 Jump Street, old show, or, or uh, 90210, let's say, it's going to be really hard at the end of the show if you've turned the sound off to say, okay, what is this story about? What were the actors going through? What happened to the actor? What's the plot, etc.? If you watch a good feature film, chances are you're going to be un able to understand the gist of the story because they don't depend on talking heads. Now, one reason television depends on talking heads is because the schedules are so tight, and it's just they turn out so much, uh, you know, so many programs and things, and the scripts are written very quickly and they're produced quickly and they're shot in, in you know, a week, two weeks. Um, so notice that next time when 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 you uh, watch a feature film, turn the sound off. And, and you'll, see, you'll see what I mean by that. What I also do, too, is anybody here have a television with closed caption on it? There's a lot of TVs now that offer this, and it's just it's for people um, that are, are hearing impaired. So um, what I often do is I turn the closed caption on, and again, I either turn the sound off and I study it just to see you know, how the actors are reacting, because it sometimes it's distracting with, with, uh, you know, with the sound on. But as an actor, if you, t if you turn it on, you can see how the actor um, enunciates and how they read their lines. And there was a movie, I think it was, um, I can't remember, it was one of Sandra Bullock's movies. Um, what was the one where she was the, uh, she worked in the subway? While yes, while you're sleeping. And the way that she reads her lines, it's like she's, to me, is very, very natural. Um, I mean, there's a lot of actors that are, but she impressed me the most because I, again, I'm not an actor, but I would have read the line almost totally different. And just the way that she she does it. It's kind of like, I've worked with actors before where they come in and they say, hello, as if it's the most important thing in the world. And they've been rehearsing that word. And it's gotta be matter of fact. And as an actor, you have to remember too that, that uh, uh, Sometimes, it, sometimes actors concentrate too much too much on pronouncing, you know, enunciation, uh, and they treat certain passages as being too important. So you have to remember that that's part of the talent of being an actor is knowing how, uh, you know, what's important, and what's not important uh, when delivering your lines. Um, now, as far as as far as auditions are concerned. Um, I know one of my pet peeves, and I know a lot of casting directors, when you submit a picture uh, and resume, now we're going with the picture, if they could, if you, okay, sometimes actors have several pictures that they send in, but if you keep aware of what picture you send in, and if you're called in, go in looking as close to that picture as you can. Now what I mean is you don't have to be wearing the same clothes. But if your hair, for women, if your hair is down, go in with your hair down. Guys, if you're, if, if you're not wearing a baseball cap, don't go in wearing a baseball cap, okay? You don't have to go in all dressed up. I mean, it depends what the part is. As long as you look like you've taken a shower or as long as you look like you're wearing good clothes. I've had actors come in, don't laugh, I've had actors come in that are very disheveled looking and it's not for a disheveled part, not, you know, unlike me right now, okay? Um, 
But just go in, I mean, jeans are fine. But as long as you go in looking like it's important that you go in and you know, it's important to you that, you, that you're presenting yourself in, in, in the best light. I also tell actors too, when you go in, it's okay to be nervous. They're gonna be nervous too. I mean, the casting directors and the director, they're gonna be nervous because they're meeting you for the first time. They're gonna pretend not to be. And they may be on a power trip, but they're still nervous because they're human beings, okay? What you have to remember too is that you may be doing them a favor as well, and that's the attitude. You have to go in, I mean, humble, but you gotta go in thinking that you may be the best person for the part. And I have, I have looked at almost, there was one part, I looked at almost 800 actors before I found the right actor. And I wish that she would have come in the first, I wish she was the first person to walk in, but she was the last person to walk in. So your attitude's gotta be, when you go in, that they need, they need you as much as you need them. Okay, and that will change, I think that'll change your, 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 your subconscious about it completely by going in and having that attitude. Okay, so, all right, how are we doing time-wise? Whatever okay. you want. I'm just, like I said, I'm jumping back and forth here because I, I've been working on this other this other film. Um, has anybody here seen Air Force One? It's a great film, isn't it? Yeah. You remember the, uh, the terrorist, um, his name is Boris, he's the one that has the big fight with Harrison Ford. Oh, yeah. Andrew Devoff. Yeah, uh, Andrew, Andrew Devoff? No, I was thinking of Leo Wallach. Okay. The first terrorist. Okay. Okay. This the one. He's the one that has that has the physical fight with Harrison Ford. He gets his head smashed in, in the window and stuff. Yeah. Well, one terrorist looks like the rest. Of them. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Andrew Debuff. He's in the first hour of the picture, and he he starred in my film, The Random Factor. Um, and he's done a couple of other films. He starred. Uh, he was the bad guy in The Low Down Dirty Shame. Uh, and I think he's in a movie now called Wishmaster. I don't think it's out yet, but it's Wes Craven's movie. So. Um, yeah, if you see Air Force One, look for the uh, the guy that has the one-on-one -on -one fight with Harrison Ford. That's uh, it's Andrew Dubois. I'm always excited when I hire an actor and then I see them go off and do a big studio picture. So, okay. Um, also, too, just just word of advice I always tell actors as well. Student films, independent films, studio films, television, whatever. Whether you are doing a negotiation or your agent is doing it, always make sure that there is a line in there that promises you a cassette, a screening cassette of your work. I know too many actors that have done a student film because the tape is really, really important, more so than the money, if there is money. Um, and if it's not in the contract, you're probably not, never going to see it. So I tell my actor friends to just put one line in, if they give, and if they give you a complaint, then they just they can't be legit because it costs them two dollars to make a copy, two or three dollars. Even if you offer to pay them ten, they'll make a profit. So keep that in mind that to always make sure that you get a copy of anything that you do. Because um, I, I like to I like to request a, a cassette from actors if they have one. I mean, not everybody has one. It's tough to do. Um, it's tough to get. A lot of actors have done stuff and they haven't been able to get a tape. But if you can get anything, a scene, whether it's from a play. Uh, whether it's a cameo, whether it's a TV show, three minutes is even is even enough. So always keep that in mind. Okay. And let me see here. Is there any quick questions? Maybe I'll just take one or two. Anything else? Three minutes, a, you know, preferred time, more or less. Three minutes is a good average time. If it's anything less, they might want to see more. But then again, less is more. If you give them more than three minutes, I would say five or six minutes is probably too much yeah because usually I mean I can get an idea if somebody has talent if they're comfortable on camera within the first 30 seconds usually you know it's that first first impression <laughs> union union or non-union doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're good people don't care whether you're union or not um, as far as as far as if it's outdated, I would say you're, you're pretty safe if it's within <coughs> three years or so. If it's something too much, like, you know, if I was an actor and I sent it, and someone asked for my photo and I sent in my baby photo, that would be outdated. It's okay? Um, I would say it depends. I mean, if you've changed a lot, if you've changed your look a lot, then I would get something recent. If you feel that 
you haven't changed a lot. I mean, I've gotten tapes from people that are five years old that they're still, you know, close enough to that. But you don't want to mislead people too, and you don't want to waste their time or your time. So send something in that you feel Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, but you know, again, if it's something that's really old, it's up to you to determine whether. Not that old. Okay. Then it would then it would be fine. It's actually it's better than nothing. You know. Now the only thing too that people have to keep in mind there is a difference between live theater and film. And if, if, does everybody agree with me on that? Yeah. Okay. In theater, you are projecting. You have to because there isn't a camera that can come in and be five inches away from you, and you have to project to the audience. Um, with film, again, the camera can be five inches away from you, and it may just be a whisper, um, a t you know, a blink, a tear, anything will get picked up. So anybody who does do theater, remember that when you do go in to read for t uh, television or for a film project, to tone it down, okay? And, you know, often I have seen casting directors or directors say, okay, that was good, but you got to tone it down, you got to tone it way down. So that's another skill. Uh, that I think is required of an actor, and that is to know how to do live theater and how to tone down and do film or television. Okay? Let's check and see if there's any any other thing I want to throw out here. And see any other questions? Or yeah. When you say hash out, what are you looking for? What do you think about? This being wonderful? I look for a headshot that that portrays the act, that looks the most like the actor is going to look when they come in. Um, I mean, I've often played a little game with my staff where we've, we've had the pictures of the actors, and they're out in the lobby, and we're trying to match up on who that person in the lobby is with this picture. And a lot of people look a lot different. Now, I'm not saying don't airbrush. I'm not saying don't get a great picture, but you want something that's a good calling card. So you want something that looks good, but still looks like you enough. And I would say guys look more like themselves than, than women because women can change their hair, the length, the color, style, um, stuff like that. But the most important thing too is, and when it comes to um, a still photographer, when you are looking for a good photographer, it's not somebody who can just make you look good. It's somebody who's going to bring out your personality. Okay, and that and that's very true. Your eyes can bring out. I mean, if they, if you're comfortable with a photographer. It's not just that smile. I mean, I've had people submit pictures and, and they're smiling, but the eyes are dead. It's just it's just blank. A good photographer is somebody that is good with people, not just somebody who knows how to use a camera. Yes. Um, if we have like more than one headshot, should we have should we send the one that portrays more than That's a, actually, that's a good question. Um, from my point of view, what I like is <clears throat> if you've got a picture that is close to, let's say it's, an, it's the part of an attorney, okay, uh, and the other one is the part of a hooker, let's say. Okay, you're going to send in, I think you're going to send in the attorney, the one that's closest to the attorney as opposed to the other one. Um, if you're not sure what the part is or what they're looking for, I always like to get, if I can get two pictures, I, I prefer that. Because sometimes you get one picture, I get one picture, I look at it, and I think, okay, they might be good, I don't know, and I'm not sure, and they might go in the no pile. But if there's two of them, and I look, and I go, okay, yeah, they, they could play this. So if you have two pictures, or even a composite, a lot of people say they don't like composites, but I like composites, okay? So, yeah, I, I would, if you're not sure, I would submit more than, more than one. It's just a picture. So, anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll take one quick. Yes, I'm still casting. Um, you guys can, the best way actually for submissions, and I'd love to have your submissions in, uh, send them care of, care of Rock. I have used a lot of APS people, and like I said, Rock has bailed me out quite a few times, um, you know, last minute when I needed actors or, you know, if I needed a certain type, whatever. So, yes, please send, you know, get your pictures and resumes to Rock. He will forward them on to me, and, you know, I will give them ser serious consideration. Um, there's about six parts in the film, so, and we've got two locked in right now, so there's, there still are some openings. Um, I will, okay, I'll, I will take some pictures now, sure, sure, I'll take them. 
Um, but anybody who doesn't have them, you can get them to Rock, and he will send them to me. Okay. Anyway, I want to wish everybody good luck, and um, you know, don't give up. It's a tough business, but work on your personality, and that's uh, that's the number one thing. Okay. Thank you. Before people start getting up here, Brian is able to stay. He will be here for the question and answer session. He does not have to leave this minute. So if you walk up and give him pictures now, you'll miss stuff. Uh, and, and that's by the way.